have the sense of fashion. Um, hi, my name is Lubal. I'm a software engineer on the MySQL optimizer team. Um, so I'm here to talk about um, MySQL and JS. It's been going to be a quick introduction to JS and MySQL. A crash course for those that use MySQL and don't use JS and want to, want to do that. <coughs> or for those that for you that I know understand JS, this is an introduction to what MySQL can do. So how many of you guys are using MySQL? How many of you are using MySQL for JS? Was one hand? Yeah, great. <laughs> uh, cool. So uh, I'm going to go through the um, the uh, first uh, a few slides about MySQL. Um, uh, what we're doing, how we, yeah, what's going on, about the moments. Then um, some GS basics, really basic stuff. For instance, what is a point? Um, I'm going to show a small example um, of SQL how to use this. And uh, a short uh, thing about future directions for JS and MySQL. And then we'll do a QA afterwards. Um, so let's just jump straight into it. Uh, MySQL is what we like to call the world's most popular open source database. Uh, it's very popular in, in web backends. Um, so if you, uh, kind of almost every website these days have a map. So using MySQL for JS in, in web maps is kind of the obvious choice uh, in that direction. Um, and uh, we've had GS support for many, many years. Uh, it's not the most advanced GS support we've had, but uh, we've had something. Um, but with 5.7, uh, uh, we released MySQL 5.7 in October last year. And in that time frame, we really started working on GS. We staffed up a GS team, uh, which I'm part of. Um, we, uh, the main thing we did in the server, MySQL server, was to actually replace the entire GS engine. We had some homegrown algorithms. We decided to swap it out with Boost Geometry. If you're using, does anyone know Boost? The C++ library, yeah. Uh, they have a geometry library there. Um, they have more or less the same goals for OGC compliance, everything that we have in MySQL. So it was, it was a very good match. Um, and uh, the big feature of MySQL 5.7 GS is that you have uh, spatial indexes in, in ODB. So if you know MySQL, you have MyISM, which is the non-transactional old uh, storage engine, and InnoDB, which is the, the modern one with transactional uh, uh, support. And until 5.7, uh, you could only get spatial indexes in MyISM, which was a major drawback. So our implementation is based on Boost Geometry. Um, we are we swapped out what we have with Boost Geometry, uh, which removed a number of bugs. It introduced a few more, so we fixed those. And it wasn't complete, so we um, extended Boost Geometry to support what we needed uh, to replace our functionality. And um, we have contributed all this back to Boost Geometry. Uh, we don't want to maintain a GS library, we want to be the users of a GS library. Um, but we had um, two guys working full time on extending Boost for the last two years. Um, and in the foreseeable future as well, we will continue with that. Um, unlike some other open source uh, database management systems, this is built in. Uh, it's not like PostGIS where you have an extension. This is a first class system of MySQL. Um, there's, uh, an, this is kind of one of the main selling points. This is ready to begin with, out of the box. Then on to the basics. Uh, JS in databases is not really hard, uh, I can say, um, at some level. Um, at least when you have a library that does a little math for you. Um, so what you need is basically data types. You need uh, an index so you can make optimizations and search fast. And you need functions to, to calculate things. And as long as we're using Boost, those functions are almost free. Uh, unless you count the people that are actually implementing those. But uh, for me, I'm not working on implementing the actual math. I'm implementing this in my school. So I just see the, the interface of, of uh, the boost. So uh, for me, JS in my school is just uh, a database with a couple of R trees stuck in it. Um, and um, some data types. So we support the simple uh, data types from OGC simple features. 
uh, the basic ones. Um, these are eight types, it's a hierarchy. Um, so you have geometry type, it's not instantiable, um, but it's, it's nice as a column type that you can store all the other subtypes in it. Uh, so the three basic types are points, line strings, and polygons. Um, I'm going to go through quick, very quickly through all these uh, in the next slides. Um, and we have collection types, uh, generic collection and collections that are type specific. Um, and all our functions support all these types. Unlike some other open source uh, GS databases, we also support geometry collections in, uh, in all functions. Um, yeah, so we have data types, uh, points and lines and stuff, but they need to be in a spatial reference system. Um, like, if one point is at uh, coordinate 0, 0 0.0 on Earth and one is at 0, 0 0.0 on Mars, they do not overlap. So you need to know which reference system you are in. Um, so, um, we currently support only two-dimensional Cartesian flat systems, so kind of an infinite plane. Uh, that is a shortcoming, but for many use cases it's good enough. Um, and it may draw back with what we have today, so we don't have a catalog of these systems. Um, so we uh, don't know which ones are flat and which ones are spherical. So, um, so currently, uh, if you want to do jazz in MySQL and want to be on the safe side, maybe kind of SRAD0, which we have, which is the infinite uh, unitless Cartesian plane, is the safe choice. But you could also make a pretty safe bet that when we get this catalog, we will follow the European Petroleum Survey Group's codes. So 4326 will be kind of the uh, GPS coordinate system, and uh, what is uh, 22500 is kind of some North American a projection or something. Um, so you can use those code and can be pretty sure that uh, you will get uh, what you expect. But for the moment, all calculations are done using this flat space. So if you use something that is a soil, then at some point it will change how it calculates this. Points. Um, point is, uh, in our space, a two-dimensional thing. Uh, these are all ways you can generate that point. You have one function with the same name as a data type that takes two components. You have uh, the well-known text format from uh, OGC, uh, GeoJSON, GeoHash, the longer that string is, the more accurate that point is. Um, well-known binary formats. And uh, at least most of these take an, a parameter uh, where you can specify which coordinate system this is. Um, you don't have to specify it, if you don't, it's default to zero. Line strings are a connected set of line segments. Um, just specify the points and it's, it's all connected. Um, it's obvious what is on a plane, it's the shortest path. When you go on a globe, it's going to be uh, uh, a great circle and kind of with different systems, it, uh, this will change. Polygons. Um, Polygons are all polygons. They have one exterior ring. They might might have one, uh, zero or more uh, holes. That is interior rings. Um, there are at least four points. You have to specify uh, the the starting point. That is the same as endpoint. So the triangle there has four points. Um, just to close it off. Um, and you can specify this in a in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction. Uh, my school will flip it for you. Um, Internally, we're using counterclockwise for outer ring and, uh, and uh, clockwise for the inner rings. So you might get a slight performance benefit if you do that as well, but um, it really shouldn't matter very much. We will auto flip it as needed. Multi point is collection of points. Well, the line string is collection of line strings. It's kind of Multi polygon is collection of polygons, but they really shouldn't overlap. Um, they can overlap, we'll store that, we won't have a problem with that, but uh, you can't really calculate a lot of stuff if they do. Um, we have a function called, uh, let's have a try, I'll talk about that later, but we have a function to check if, they, if it's uh, geometrically valid. Um, it, it limits what you can do if it's not. So, um, 
jump collection is um, a collection that can contain anything. Um, it is, can also be empty. This is the only time we type we allow to be empty. I know the OGC standards uh, specify that any of these types could be empty, con contain nothing. Um, currently, we only allow the jump collection to be empty. Um, so if you have a polygon over here, a polygon here, and compute intersection, there's no intersection, so you get an empty uh, jump collection as a result. Um, so the summary, um, these types are contain the geometry and the spatial reference system ID. Uh, that is what we store binary in MySQL. Uh, all coordinates are uh, double precision coordinates. We can store invalid geometries. Uh, if you're unsure if your data is valid or not, you can check it. We have a function to do that. Um, this is all kind of in the normal uh, SQL multimedia standard and in the um, open geospatial standards. Um, yeah. Then we have functions. Um, they're only defined for the valid geometries. If you try to compute something on invalid geometries, um, if we detect that, we will uh, give you an error message. Message. Um, if you don't, you might get kind of a best effort result. Or since our algorithms are assuming that um, these are valid, you might get a very weird result. That's the typical way of, of handling this as well, because you can't really guarantee anything on these invalid uh, judges. So you need to make sure your judges are valid if you're going to use them for your hand computing intersections and, and unions and stuff. Um, or maybe, well, actually, unions is, might actually uh, be one of them where you, where you make an effort and, and try to, uh, to, to really make a union, because overlapping things are, are kind of what union Atlas. Um, and you're not allowed to mix different coordinate systems. We'll just bark at you and say no, we can try to compute something in with two parameters in, in different uh, coordinate systems. We have uh, currently no way of transforming between these coordinate systems, so you will have to stick to one. We have a lot of functions, uh, so we can compare things. Are they is one point within another? And a polygon, or is uh, what is the intersection between two polygons? Um, what's the area of a polygon? What's the length of a line? Uh, what's the x coordinate or the y coordinate? Or how many objects are in a collection? That kind of thing. We also have like uh, analysis functions like uh, centroid or convex hull, um, and we have import and export functions. Uh, there's a lot of import functions. They use the same format, but it's just specified by the standards to, to have to be there. Um, the, there are four formats, uh, well-known text, well-known binary, uh, GeoJSON, and GeoHash. Um, that's what we currently support. Um, and we optimize using our trees. You don't have to do anything in particular. We will recognize functions. Um, you see, top ones here are, are the standard functions. You have some simpler functions below that will use only the bounding box. So two polygons that kind of are very close and have weird shapes, they might not actually overlap, but the bounding boxes will overlap. And we have uh, functions for that as well. Because um, if you don't need the exact shape, those are so much faster to calculate. Uh, so you will be performance improvement if you know you don't need it and you just use those simple functions. Now my example, uh, this is a very simple example, but if you want to know how the SQL works, this will give you a, a very um, brief uh, uh, introduction to that. So we're going to go sightseeing in my hometown of Trondheim. Um, I'm going to make a simple table with three columns. Uh, there's a unique ID, just because I'm um, I like an ID for, for every point I have. Uh, position and a description of uh, a site. Um, so the description will probably just be the name of it. Um, I'm creating a table, um, a table called sites. My ID is an integer, it's auto incremented, it's a primary key, uh, which means this table is going to be indexed by that key. Uh, I have position, uh, which is the type of point, which means I if I have a park, I would pick one point for that park, not a whole polygon. 
Um, it wanted to have both, both points and polygons, so I would have to pick the geometry type for that call. The description is just a string. And um, I have a spatial key, which is a spatial index for the right as well, uh, synonyms as well. Uh, I call it my R tree, and it's an index over the position column. Um, if you see that position column has a uh, point not null, uh, if you're going to index it, it has to be not null to my score. We can't uh, add null values to these uh, R trees. This is one limitation uh, of the implementation. Um, so let's insert something into it. Uh, position is uh, 10 degrees east, uh, 63 degrees north, and that's the region of the uh, That's a church in uh, the city center of Trondheim. We can select that, uh, that point back again uh, as well on text. We'll get the textual representation of the point and the name of the place. It's really, really simple. So let's add a few more points. Uh, this shows you some additional formats. So, uh, one thing on Tron, and if you ever been there, uh, there are other tours that are mistaking the main building of the university for the Nidus Cathedral. Uh, so, we add that to the table as well, so that we can figure out what that is. We do that with GeoJSON. Um, you see the format of GeoJSON up there, it's just a fragment of GeoJSON, it's not the entire document. Uh, but it, you could uh, also add the entire document over there. Um, and we have uh, the Student Society Building, which is an architectural monument on John M. Um, it's uh, also outside the city center together with the university. Uh, Here is an example of adding the SRID to the, uh, to the thing. Kind of the other ones, <coughs> when one specifies it, uh, it will be zero, except for GeoJSON, where the standard specifies that it should be uh, 426. Um, we also add the. Uh, Monument over the uh, Viking Kingdom Pound City, which is that in the city, uh, city center. Um, it's just add as well on text again. So our sites are here University, the Student Society, the Cathedral, and uh, the statue at the top. And in Toronto, we usually define the city center as this area. It's a polygon. By the way, this is made using a tool called uh, Wicket. Uh, it's a nice tool for just plotting uh, well-known text, uh, an online tool. Um, so that is the city center. Uh, as you see, two of these sites will be inside, two will be outside of the city. Center. So let's try to get the, the database to answer that question. Um, find all the sites in the city center. Uh, first, we define that polygon that we saw. Uh, just plot it into. Uh, to a user-defined variable in SQL. And then I select uh, the name of all the sites where the position is inside the city. Um, so this would, uh, well, depending on the size of the table and everything, but it could use the R3 at least uh, to look this up. Uh, if the optimizer thinks that would be the, the best thing, uh, this table is very short, so it might just scan the whole thing. Um, so what do you think the result is? Error. An error, yeah, because I mix SRIDs. Um, so I have to fix that first. Um, fix the SRID. Uh, we don't have a function to change the SRID of, of an object. Uh, that's a really thing, simple thing to implement, so we, we probably should. But for now, we just export it to a format that doesn't support the SRD, and then import it back in again with defaults. Uh, it's not very efficient, but it works. Um, then we can do the query, and we see that MySQL gives you the correct result. That is really the ease of, of, of um, geometry in, in um, SQL. You just type the expression, and, and you get it. It's, it's not rocket science in, in any way. Um, Kind of rocket science is on the, the uh, on the inside of the, the mathematical equations. Um, so um, that's what we can do today. Uh, so this is only a simple example, but still, uh, we have much more to do in the future. We just started on improving JS like two years ago. Um, so someone told us that Earth isn't flat. Uh, I'm inclined to believe that. Uh, so, 
They've sold the Earth model, would be nice. Um, Boost Jumpy is already working on extending that. Um, you, there was a talk at this uh, one of these big C plus conferences uh, last year about how they were doing that in Boost. Um, I think it was Scott Mark actually holding that talk. Um, so and we can add projections, define the projections, and transformations between all these. Uh, Boost is using kind of. I think they ported Project 4 into Boost uh, and templatized it. They claim it's faster than Project 4. I don't know, but uh, that's the claim, at least, from, from Boost guys. Um, we'll add some some uh, metadata tables that the standards are compliant are, are I'm saying we should have. Um, really try to be standard compliant on this. Um, I think maybe we might end up being more standard compliant than Postgres. For what we do. Uh, 3D and 4D support, uh, adding data types is quite easy. Uh, it's a function that will take time. Um, so just adding data types is might happen. Uh, if you add 3D, you might add 4D as well. Um, but otherwise, uh, if you have requests, we will be happy to take them. Um, because it's much better, much better to have you guys saying what we should do instead of me telling you what you can do. Um, so um, let's have a talk if you if you have your uh, some spatial needs, uh, we can uh, we can discuss that. Um, I think I'll just end with a few words from the governor. Uh, this is uh, my school JS is kind of like Google Maps but better. Uh, <laughs> so. Um, I think we have time for a few questions. Uh, and, uh, yeah. So if you say non-flat Earth, does that include stuff like being <coughs> able to query which points are less than five kilometers from this point? Yeah. So the question is right now with the with not knowing projections that probably doesn't work. Right. Yeah. So the question is about uh, the non-flat Earth. Uh, will that include things like calculating? Which points are within a, uh, a five-kilometer distance from from this place? Um, actually, with with the uh, the flat model, you can also do five kilometers not that far. You will get a pretty accurate one. Uh, but yes, if you s if you take a point and take the the buffer of that, extend that to a five-kilometer radius. You try plotting that. Well, yeah, try plotting that on, on the map. You can see kind of an uh, ellipsis. Um, if we add um, full ellipsoidal support. That would not happen. You would get actually the five kilometer radius. Uh, so yes, that would be also on the other side. Um, that was Christopher. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think uh, you would. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so yeah, okay. I do some um, volunteer work at an archaeology uh, department, basically. We do a lot of burial stuff, and that gets very complex. And we are really interested in 3D GIS because, of course, we have like tombs with skeletons in them. And that data is very important to us, not to talk about like the different layers. How close is uh, the implement, well, how close do you think the full 3D support and 4D support would be? Are we talking three years, five years, 10 years? Okay, so the question is about how close is 3D and 4D uh, support, uh, because they want to model dead bodies in crypts or whatever. Yeah, um, Among other things, yes. Well, just modeling them, just storing the points, uh, that is an easy thing. Mm -hmm. So, do you need more than that? Do you need operations on those? No, we, will, we will mostly be working with, with areas and then points in them. So, where certain finds were found in certain areas, either ground layers or, for example, tubes or stacked tubes, for example. Okay, so you work in one area, but do you need, do you need to kind of uh, find the things that are in a volume or is it just in a 2D area? Um, could be either. Okay, either. So, for instance, to, to find things in a 2D area, the way the standards are, are kind of uh, defined now, uh, all these functions somewhere, here for instance, is that if you po give a 3D point into any of these functions, according to the standard, it should do a 2D operation for you. Uh, so there are separate functions we have to, to implement to get the full kind of find things in a volume. Um, so that's a um, slightly different thing. Um, uh, but um, the 3D, well, it depends. Um, 
we have, we have usually like two, two and a half years between these days at least my score. Uh, for 5.8, I'm not sure I would expect more than kind of geography, I think so it's sports, but uh, so maybe take a couple more years for the next major release. Uh, and it all depends on priorities, uh, but as we say, 3D is, uh, people are wanting 3D, so at least the stores part should be quite easy. Mm -hmm. um, then the math is, uh, well, maybe we could support some math, but not all. Um, do you have time for this uh, last question? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sure. Do you know the reason why you incorporated the SRIDs to the columns, to the, to the rows, not to the columns? Uh, okay. Uh, the question was why you incorporated the SRIDs because to the rows, not to the columns. Because you can mix the SRIDs. So you, yeah, you, you asked me uh, why we allow different SRDs in the same column. Yeah. Um, well, actually, I wasn't wrong when that decision was made many, many years ago. Uh, but what we are looking at is to say that you can restrict the column to an SRD. We haven't implemented that yet, but uh, that is definitely something on our map because uh, this will screw up indexes and everything. Uh, don't have it. So that's definitely something we are we are interested in. Uh, thank you for listening.